Good evening, everyone. It's 6 o'clock, and I would like to call this regular meeting of the Lansing School District Board of Education to order. And hello to all of the people in the room this evening. <laughs> for those of, for th those of you, that of you, that, that individual of you watching at home, um, there are three people in the audience, and two of them are district employees. So, <laughs> oh, there's another one. There's another district. But they're a married couple, so it doesn't really count. Uh, will everyone please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? Will the clerk please call the roll? Dr. Boddy? Dr. Cavanaugh? Present. Ms. Hodgen? Mrs. Lawrence? Here. Mrs. Lilji? Here. Mr. Lopez? Mrs. Moore? Dr. Rodriguez? Present. Mrs. Willis? Present. Quorum is present. Thank you very much. And I know uh, Mr. Lopez and Ms. Moore are not feeling well this evening, so they're not going to be with us. Um, any additions to the agenda? Dr. Rodriguez. Thank you. I would like to add to the committee report the Ingham School Officers Association report. Okay, I'm going to add that as number three under committee reports. And I'm also going to add um, a closed session. We can do that after the second public comment, so that will be agenda item. Twelve. Never mind. There is an updated agenda in everyone's packet that I didn't see, so it's already on there. No, this is this is the minutes. <laughs> okay, we'll figure it out. All right, uh, any public comment? No. You guys want to say anything? All right. Okay. Uh, we're going to move on to report from Superintendent Ben. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, it is wonderful to see the four people in the audience, um, but it's also wonderful to know that there are people at home listening uh, to this. You know, this is, in fact, the first board meeting of the new school year with children. Um, and I wanted to take this time to share some thoughts and to really update not only the board, of course, but the community. Uh, this is week two. Uh, the first week I spent every morning at the Cata bus station. And I want to just tell you from what I saw, you had an incredible amount of district staff, CATA staff, and a bunch of children using the bus. It was a real incredible sight to see. Um, a lot of times you would talk to kids, how, how is this? It's amazing. The kids are like, I've been riding the bus for two years. I don't understand what the problem is. Uh, or they would say things like, the bus is air conditioned and it has outlets and I get to listen to my phone. But of course, the larger conversation that we had as a community was that this allows for so much more for this district. The fact that kids can now have the ability to not just go to work, but to go to school, I mean, go to school and go to work for free, to stay after school for sporting events, to stay after school for tutoring. Um, we've now started to see multi-age families where kids who are in fifth grade and seventh grade and eighth grade and 10th grade going to school together, supporting each other. It's been really incredible. Have there been some bumps around the road? Absolutely. Um, but I have to tell you that, you know, the, the one kid that was late to a bus, our public safety drives them to school 
It's kind of amazing. Um, and that's really one of the things that we saw this week and last week that uh, – made me thrilled. It was it was really special. Um, you know, have there been uh, some issues where kids, you know, kind of didn't know where to go? One kid, I think, was riding a bus a couple of times, and then finally the bus driver just called main office, called a, a, one of the, the um, district employees. We sent the van. We got the kid. The kid's home, you know, and that's what we can do in Lansing, and that's why I know it was a big deal for the community, and, and rightfully so. There was a lot of fear and a lot of uh, worry, but what we've seen is our community rallying together and really supporting folks. So, you know, I am, I cannot thank the CATA staff, the bus drivers, the central office. Uh, my favorite, uh, you know, story was uh, first day I was at Sexton and the bus driver of the Sexton bus was a Sexton grad. And so there he was as a CATA driver saying, that's my school, talking to the kids. And I rode the bus, you know, back to the depot. And, you know, just being able to talk to the bus drivers about how this makes this feel more about the city and more about the community. It was really, it was really powerful. Uh, what else can I, can I say? And I'll go back like last year where there's specific number updates and things like that. But since this is the first time I get to speak to the community and to the board about it is to just, you know, give a sense of how much better this year has been than last year. I mean, not only do we get to actually see the smiling faces of the kids, but as all of the kind of K-8 teachers can tell you, we now have our DIAF programs in much more robust capacity, meaning that we have arts and music and PE. Teachers are getting more of their planning time back. Not all of it. I know we're still working on a couple of minutes here and there, but, you know, we have over 30 of our arts and uh, programming, librarians, PE teachers. It, it's just so much different this year. Um, the HR department has done an incredible job uh, whittling away at uh, the vacancies, uh, being able to get you know, teachers in every room, support in every room, um, and then just to see the families. Uh, on the first day, I was at Cumberland, um, you know, and just seeing the families being so happy and supportive of bringing their kids in. The other big thing, of course, is the IDs. Um, you know, we have an ID system now for our children where, you know, in real time, we know who's in the building and who's not in the building. Sadly, we have to deal about safety and security. It's important. And and this district is doing a really good job making sure that we know where our kids are. And, you know, it's been really great to see the schools and teach the kids how to use the ID, how to swipe in, how to do it. You know, even our big schools are able to just kind of zip through. They're learning the first day. Did it take a while? Absolutely. And then the next day it got quicker. And then the next day after that it got quicker. And, you know, we're teaching our kids how to how to do this. So it's been, it's been really special. Um, as of today, I think I have visited all 25 of our schools except for one, maybe. I have to look at my list. Today I was at Kendall in and um and it was wonderful there, uh, sp spending time with LaDonna. And I was at Pattengill spending time with Missy today. And just seeing the kids back in school has been terrific. Uh, you know, starting next time, uh, we do have an ISS next week. But I'll get back into a rhythm of giving very specific updates. But I just thought that today I wanted to share um, just this kind of get general gestalt of happiness, of being part of something. Um, and the teachers feeling happier, the, the kids feeling happier, the parents are feeling happier, and, you know, we are really proud of what's going on. But all of you at home and certainly in the audience, you know, please be in, in contact with us. We're only going to make this district uh, stronger. Um, the other thing I'll point out, just because it was in the press, was we had a really nice article about our uh, CTE programming that's really, um, you know, last year I think you heard me speak about how I care deeply about CT, but not as a place to pick, you know, send kids away if they're not good at academics. CTE is really about an incredible learning opportunity that's academic. Um, last year, we only had 60 students in our CTE program. This year, we're currently enrolled at over 220. We have many, many programs that are going on. Um, we are thrilled with our building trades programs and our PCT and EMT and just 
you know, the fire science. There's just been a lot of really, really great stuff. So, you know, I don't want to 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 meander too much. Uh, people's times are precious, and I know we have lots to do today. But it's really, I hope everybody gets gets to feel that things are different and I hope all of you get to spend some time in schools meeting with the kids meeting with the parents meeting with the the teachers and the administrators um, it feels really good one shout out I want to give I mean the entire ET deserves shout outs uh, continuously but uh, Jessica Benavides and her team, um, you know, one of the things that I think you've heard me say over and over again is we have to be in the schools. We have to be there to support everybody. And that her team has visited something like 60, 73 uh, schools this week, which is really incredible. Um, and I just hope that everybody hears this. Parents, students, staff, everybody understands that the central office's job isn't to sit in this building. The central office Office's job is to be in the schools with kids, and we're really living that. Um, and so, because of that, I just want um, to thank everybody for that. So, you know, if there's specific things that folks want me to talk about uh, during um, superintendent updates, I'm happy to do that. Uh, but again, starting next time, we'll get back into the more kind of formal stuff. But uh, with that, uh, President Lawrence, I just want to thank you. Uh, it's been a great opening two weeks, and uh, the board has really been super supportive of us uh, going into. I guess my, my second year. So thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Shouldener. GSRP starts on Wednesday, in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> Great start readiness program, the district's free preschool. There are still some openings in some buildings throughout the district. My four year old will be starting GSRP on Wednesday. It is four day a week, full day, free preschool. They feed them breakfast, lunch, and snacks. They take a little rest in the middle of the day. Um, so I don't know if you're paying like a lot of money for daycare and you're looking for a more affordable option, this could be a great option. Uh, moving on to routine matters and old business. First up, we have committee reports, personnel committee, Mrs. Willis. Thank you. <clears throat> First, I have to apologize to Dr. Hartley for thinking he was Mark, our new HR director <laughs> for <laughs> our personnel report. Um, so we have a pretty robust personnel report in front of you this uh, evening. I do have to want to make one correction. Um, respectful of privacy, on the very first page of your personnel report, second teacher from the bottom, Everett teacher, um, actually has been with the district for 20 years, so there is a zero missing. So we will adopt the um, personnel report as presented. Um, and that is it, our approvals today include the approval of the new HR director who is Mark Manley. Um, if there are any, I do have an HR question though, but I don't necessarily know if it, um, if you guys see we have some approvals for tenure on our um, approval as well. I just noted that, I was pointed out by President Lawrence, that one of the, um, individuals in front of us today for approval for tenure is also the individual that's going out for the entire year on a medical leave, but I don't know if that is mutually exclusive or not. Yeah, other than that, that concludes my report. Questions? Do we know the, does it, I mean, if it doesn't matter, I was just curious. Oh. Um, this is public, right? I don't know. The employee I'll come going. Over. Okay, I was going to say, yeah. President Lawrence, I think we figured it out though. Oh. The tenure date yeah. uh, is March. I thought you knew that. Wow, well, no. Oh. <laughs> Reading is helpful. Okay, thank you to the HR department for all of the wonderful work that you've been doing. I have an update for you. Do. The tenure date is March. <laughs>
I could have told you that a long time ago, but you need to go on leave too. Oh gosh, I clearly need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much to the wonderful HR department for all of the work that you've done. If you look at the list of hires we have, it's pretty robust. Uh, and that concludes my report, Madam thank President. You. Thank you. Well, if somebody else gives a report next time. <laughs> um, uh, Mrs. Moore is not with us this evening, but I will just give a quick update on the strategic planning committee. They do have a meeting coming up Monday evening, and that is my entire update. The 12th is going to be a community meetings at Sexton High School at 530, and then we'll be sub committees and going in different groups. It's Sexton High School and start at 6 o'clock, but we'll be serving lunch, dinner at 5.30. And Sexton I think they school. already had uh, Heard of it. many people already answered and that were a good meeting. Thank, Thank you. I hope so. Thank you, Doc. Uh, any questions for Dr. Rodriguez? Uh, just as a... I guess uh, FYI for those listening at home, we do know that the YouTube audio uh, might be a little bit problematic. You can watch it on channel 21 or uh, we will edit this and of course make it available online uh, with better sound. We do apologize, thank you. But if you think that my voice sounds unreasonably deep, then it, that it is, <laughs> <laughs> it is, you're not wrong. You're not hearing things, it is. Moving on to our ISOA report, Dr. Rodriguez. Thank you, Madam President. And the Ingongan School Officers Association met uh, last Wednesday at um, 8 o'clock. And um, we had a um, presentation by the Michigan Association School Board by Dr. Jennifer, I think. And she presented to us all the, uh, the, the, what the legislators are doing right now and how many things are going to be on November 8th to vote for. And we don't know because the, we have time until tomorrow and after that everything will be there. Um, also, she was talking about what is going to happen after the, uh, the elections on November 8th, and probably not too much will go in the legislators, with the legislators after that. But, as you know, the, I think, few billion dollars that's supposed to go to education didn't, was distributed now, then maybe next year we have the money we need to educate the kids. Um, after that, the superintendent from Holt gave us a presentation about the round table of the superintendents and how they are working together. That was a good presentation. And I am sending to you today the minutes that you can read. Everything there is very interesting. After that, um, everybody who was there present for different district gave uh, some thoughts, and mine is, was the longest one. I don't know why. <laughs> and I said the school that we have the football field um, from an Easter High School dedicated to Jill Sauceda, and the many students and family members were there present. And um, I also said the amount of the students will move to Wood Creek. Attending this transportation for high school students went well. Open house was well attended. Then um, you can read what the other uh, other um, board member for the district was saying. But very important, every one of you have an invitation for Lansing Candidate Breakfast Forum. That is going to happen Wednesday, October 3rd, 2022, 8 to 9.30 in Okimos Event Center, Comfort Inn. Um, if you have any question or anything, you have all information here for you that is very important because all the candidates are going to be there. Um, I think that concludes my, present, my report. Thank you. Any questions for Dr. Rodriguez? Okie dokie. We're going to move on to our consent agenda this evening. Our consent agenda includes approval of the August 18th regular meeting minutes and a receipt and approval of the personnel report. May I have a motion? 
the <laughs> Dr. Potty. I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. It's been moved by Dr. Body, supported by Mrs. Lilji. Any discussion? Will all those in favor of adoption of the consent agenda please signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Consent agenda is adopted. We will move on to new business and discussion items. Uh, first up is establishing a personnel committee. May I have a motion? Dr. Rodriguez. I move the, the, pre, the president of the Board of Education uh, create, establish a personal committee. Is there any support? Support. It's been moved by Dr. Rodriguez, supported by Ms. Hodgen. Discussion? Ms. Uh, Hodgen. Establishing, like, making a new one? Yes. Which always are, uh, it's just that we have it reinforcing so why don't you do something that we have for years? Do you know if one exists under our bylaws? So uh, the recommendation is to seat the committee. So we, I don't know if we actually suspended the bylaw or not, um, but the personnel committee has essentially been the vice president of the board without a seated committee. So okay. the uh, recommendation is to have the president seat a committee. Yeah, because like the superintendent said, there are many things that were done for many years that are not being done now. And who did, I don't know how those things disappeared anyway. So, Ms. Hodgen, that's a, that's a good point, that we may have done this in the past. I know that at least for the, the eight years that I've been on the board, we have not had a personnel committee or a budget and finance committee, and, and we're just kind of reestablishing those board norms. Um, so that's what both of these items are about making use of um, the parameters within our structure to use these committees and seat these committees. Um, I th think I have spoken to the individuals who I would like to seat on the personnel committee, but they are myself, Mrs. Willis, Dr. Cavanaugh, and Mr. Lopez. Um, and we will figure out a meeting schedule and responsibilities as we go forward. Any other discussion? Will all those in favor of seating the personnel committee please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you and we'll move on to establishing seating a budget and finance committee. May I have a motion? Madam President. Dr. Rodriguez. I move that the president of the Board of Education con the, con the, uh, the, the creation of the Budget and Finance Committee. It's been moved by Dr. Rodriguez, supported by Dr. Boddy. Um, the members that I would, any discussion similar to what we're doing with the Personnel Committee? Uh, the members that I would like to see on this committee are Mrs. Moore, of course, as board treasurer, Dr. Kavanaugh, Mrs. Lilji, and Dr. Rodriguez. I am the older one, you know that. Did you say I'm the older one? I am one? the older one. <laughs> we'll have you for as long as we can. <laughs> Any discussion? Will all those in favor of, a, of seating the Budget and Finance Committee please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, very good, thanks guys. We're gonna move on to our FOIA appeal and I just wanna make a little tweak before I ask for a motion and that would be the language in the motion should read, the Board of Education approve the district's response to the FOIA appeal as presented. It's been Second. moved by Mrs. Willis, too late doc, supported by Dr. Boddy. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? I know this is included in your packet. And if you have questions, shout them out. Question. Um, this information is going to be presented soon anyway, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I just mean, wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we received um, extra time from the federal government to make changes, and so we want to do the best thing we can for the people of Lansing, and so we will be able to present this publicly and well to anybody who requests it. Further discussion? Will all those in favor please signify by saying aye? 
Uh, Any opposed? Okay. And any public comment? No. I don't know why I'm asking. Yes. Um, I would like to take a minute to recognize and also give our condolences to Mr. Sergio Keck, the, the, the deceased of his father. I really want to let him know and his mother and sister and aunt that we admire his father a lot and they came as immigrants and he did everything to give us a great person here in Lansing School District and one also in Lansing Community College and the city hall. Then I knew him for several years and always humble enough to be there to see what he can do for others. Then um, our condolences to him and his family. And um, you know, it's difficult to replace, but uh, we will do our best. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez. Today is October 3rd. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez and Sergio. We love you and we're sorry. Um, we're going to move on to a closed session. May I have a motion? Madam President. Mrs. Willis. I move that the Board of Education recess into closed session for the purpose of discuss, discussing negotiations of a collective bargaining agreement, which is permissible under Section 8C of the Open 8, subsection 1C of the Open Meetings Act. It's been moved by Mrs. Willis, supported by Mrs. Hodgen. Any discussion? Will all those in favor please signify by saying aye? aye. Any opposed? Okay, we are in closed session. No, they either. Uh, it starts uh, when Wednesday. This Wednesday? Yeah. Next Wednesday. Good evening, everyone. We're back. Report from Secretary and announcements, please, Doc. Thank you, Madam President. The first thing I have here is the pre-school classes start next Wednesday, September 14. Pre-school classes start next Wednesday, September 14. Thursday, September 15, ISS meeting held at Pattingill at 6 p.m. See Lansing School District website for more information. Friday, September 16, and Saturday, September 17, 2022, class reunion. See uh, Lansing Eastern. See Lansing School District website for more information. Friday, September 30th, 2022, no school, we had professional development. And finally, no board meeting on the September 22nd. That is all the information I have, Madam President. Thank you very much. Any uh, comments from board members this evening? Okay, at 719, we are adjourned.